Hey guys, and welcome to another uh, tutorial. On this one, we're going to be talking about air to air refueling. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Alright, guys, so I'm all lined up here, and uh, on the HSD, waypoint 2 is where we're going to line. We're going to uh, rendezvous with the tanker at uh, about 38 miles over the water. So I'll show you where the tanker's at. It should be in route right now. It's going out towards the uh, rendezvous point. All right, we're ready to taxi. Just getting those with steering on here. Pusan on Tower, Hornet 1-1, one, one, ready to taxi to the active. Hornet 1-1, on Tower, position and hold. Position and hold, 101. Man, and these trees add so much immersion to the sim. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome looking. Can't thank the BMS team enough for all of their contributions. I'm sure it took countless hours of, of work getting this stuff in here. And it runs really, really great, so. Alright, so here we go. Good flight controls, engines are good, good, uh, good temps, and brakes release. No lights on the panel. There's 70, those are stern coming off. 120, 130, 140, nice gentle pull. Alright, so coming up on our rendezvous point at waypoint 2, and we got the, uh, Got the tanker lo locked up. He's about 24,000 uh, feet. So, and we'll keep pushing inbound here. All right, so just a quick note about ta air to air TAC cannon. The way you do that is you bring it up on uh, hit number one here. And all aircraft and BMS should have some TAC and frequency that they're uh, broadcasting on. So, again, it's just a radio frequency. And the way you do that, usually it's going to be 29 Yankee or some other variation. You have to check the uh, mission briefing. Um, and so let's say I put 29 in uh, and I hit enter and then I hit zero to change the band. See the band down there? I can change that between X and Y. Typically all air to air is going to be on Y. And then the last thing is you want to be in air to air mode. So you hit the right rocker here. Uh, track and receive is for ground stations. Air to air is going to be typically for air air stations. Um, and then when we go into TACAN mode down here by pressing the I key or hitting this button, uh, you should see this pointing towards the aircraft. And then here's our mileage from it. So we're about four miles away right now. And that corresponds to our F number right here, which we have this, this guy locked up. And he is about, you know, four miles away or so. But the only problem is is that this thing just keeps spinning uh, and it doesn't lock on. So I'm not really sure what the deal is with that. Uh, basically, you'll get distance with this. It won't actually point to the aircraft for some weird reason. And so typically you want to hit Q while you're in mission in the campaign. I don't have AWACS up right now, Airborne Warning and, airborne, uh, warning and Command System. Early Warning and Command System. Uh, and then... You hit Q, and uh, a couple, you know, a couple times, and then you hit four. See this vector to tanker here? Uh, that's what you want to hit, and AWACS will actually give you a bearing to the tanker. And the tanker is always going to be, you know, pretty much in the twenty thousand, like nineteen thousand to maybe twenty-five thousand in that range. So if you set your radar to scan that range, uh, and you're, you know, you kind of take AWACS's commands, uh, his vectors. You should see the uh, the tanker, or you should see him on radar and lock him up. So that's a little tip on how to find the tanker in the first place. And then the other thing is a tanker is typically going to be right around 300 knots. You know, maybe a little fast, maybe a little slower. So watch your airspeed and you know try to uh, 
Try not to overtake him too quickly. I'm gonna turn down this uh, system real quick here. So once you find them, you can um, form up on his left wing. And I'm not using smart scaling, so that is actually the size of the aircraft. Um, and actually, I think smart scaling turns off at close distances anyways. So you hit the Y key, and you just want to request fuel. Hornet, 1-1, one, one, camel, 1-1, one, one, copy. And he's going to go into his uh, you know little orbit pattern. Uh, there's a few things that we want to do at this point. Hornet, 1-1, one, one, camel, 1-1, one, one, clear to pre-contact position. All right, so he just cleared us the pre-contact. Hornet 1-1 one, one cleared uh, pre-contact. All right, so what we're going to do is a couple of things. Number one, we want to turn our radar off. Okay. Um, now, the problem in BMS is that the Hornet typically has a standby mode. And I'll put it on pause here. Uh, the thing is, it doesn't work. You can only go operational or off. So what kind of sucks is that, you know, you'd have to... Uh, re-warm up your radar which is not really that big of a deal for for the sake of realism now let's go ahead and turn it off you'll see your uh, flight control radar um, or fire control radar is uh, is off completely and then the uh, second thing the saying is uh, switch is safe or nose code switch is safe so our nose is cold and the reason we say that is is uh, the radar is emitting a bunch of radiation out of the nose and you don't want to blast the uh, crew <laughs> with that that's why they do it in real life you don't want to blast the crew with a bunch of radiation right and you're also going to be messing with their uh, electro early warning system or electronic warning receiver um, so you don't want to do that that's why you turn it off and number two we also want to uh, have our switches safe which just means your master arm is going to be in the uh, in the off position right so you don't inadvertently press the trigger and trigger down the uh, your tanker. And then the last thing we want to do here is uh, extend our refueling probe. And you'll see that extend on the right hand side there. So that's where that's where it is. And let's keep going here. So he just cleared me to pre-contact which doesn't mean that I'm cleared to contact. It just means I'm cleared to uh, to kind of approach him. I'm still going to form up on his left side, and then once I'm comfortable on his left side to avoid his jet wash, then I'm going to creep up towards his uh, towards the center here. So once I do that, you know I can tell him that I'm ready to take fuel, and my wingman just cut in front. Roger. All right. Probably not going to talk as much because I'm just trying to really focus on this. Now, you want to get behind the tanker in a nice, comfortable position and trim the aircraft out as necessary. All right. It's better to have uh, the aircraft want to descend rather than climb if you're, if you're hands off uh, the stick. You know you don't want to go hands off and the aircraft's always trying to climb into the uh, KC-135 so it's better that you be a little bit nose heavy rather than uh... Th Hornet, 1-1, one, one, camel, 1-1, one, one, clear to contact position you can see the lights came on right now so that's good and I'm just gonna really gently get underneath him here I'm sorry about that oscillation I was trying to adjust the trim for just a second and so the technique that I use I'm just holding the base of my joystick uh, so just the very bottom and what that prevents you from doing is over correcting if you're grabbing the whole stick and you're just manhandling it of course it's uh, you're gonna have some pilot induced oscillations so just kind of you know holding the uh, the base of the of the controls 
kind of like almost fingertips, but a little more than that. You can uh, really have some fine control over that. And then really work the throttles. You know, the key again is to relax as much as possible. The F-18 does have a lot more power than the uh, F-16. It obviously has two engines. So it's a little bit harder. you got to really lock those throttles. And I like to see the boom operator. Like I know if I can see the boom operator, I'm probably in a good position. Right above that mirror there. And it depends on your, on your viewpoint, of course. But, uh... Kind of try to get that mirror close to the boom operator there. And I'm flying off the aircraft mostly. Just staring at the aircraft, not really looking at the boom itself. Locking the throttles up. Staring at the aircraft. Flying off, fly off the tanker. Contact. Fly off the tanker. And then uh, just keep it in position as much as you can. Fly off the tanker, relax your muscles, take a deep breath, wiggle your toes if you have to, but just take deep breaths, just fly off the tanker. Okay, so that's uh, 7,000, and I'm going to move over to the uh, right wing. Once I tell the guy that I am, I'm going to try to fly above the tanker here and on his right wing. I'm going to tell him that I'm done. Uh, once I do that, my uh, wingman is going to come in. Roger. And again, keep flying off the tanker. Wingman's going to come in. He's going to come out. And then once he's done, he's going to go underneath me and and kind of go into formation there. You can see that guy's in the uh, in the uh, waiting position there. He's high on the aircraft, and that. It enables any aircraft that are refueling to just break away by going down and right or left. And uh, that way you don't have to worry about aircraft you know, collisions. If, you're, if I'm flying right on his wing and he has to break right for some weird reason, uh, he won't collide right into me. And I think the uh, KC-135 or whatever refueling aircraft will only fill you up to the, your takeoff weight. So I only had 7,000 pounds uh, taking off, and I imagine that's all he's going to you know he's gonna give me so while I wait for that I'm gonna retract the probe here and decrease the throttles this is kind of a nice position up here you can see the uh, the wingtip of the KC-135 there he goes he's done and hope is on the right side now. So, if you fly a little bit above the tanker, it, give, it gives your uh, AI wingman some room. Contact. To really uh, get underneath you there. I think the rule is you want to be about a hundred feet, according to Natops, above the uh, tank. And you can see this wingman down here. He's fl he's really flying off the tank, or not off of me. They're in formation. So the key really to this is to really, really relax as much as possible. Um, of course, practice practice makes perfect, so you do have to practice. A lot of people give up on this skill because they just think it's too hard or whatever. Um, but those are just excuses. You can do this. You just got to practice. You got to get in there and do it. Um, I remember, you know, in Jane's F-18, 
which is almost impossible to hit the tanker in that. I'd, I'd be on there for like five hours, you know. But it refines those formation flying skills. Uh, flying formation will definitely help it as well. And then, you know, the more you practice formation flying and just, you know, being around the tanker, you just get more and more comfortable with it. Uh, but the number one thing that happens is people tense up. So the m y when your muscles are all tensed up, you make large corrections rather than really small, finite ones. And then you really can't stay with the tanker, you know. The other thing is is over controlling with the left hand on the uh, throttle. Camel one one ready. Roger. So obviously. One, one four camel one one clear to contact position. If you're making large corrections with the uh, throttle, that's not going to be good either. So it's really fine, kind of, kind of little mouse corrections with both the stick, and with the uh, the throttle contact. as well. Uh, and so what I tell myself. You know, when I'm close to the tank, or, or even right now, is just to relax my muscles as much as possible. And um, and then with the throttle, it's really, it's called walking the throttle, but really just think of it as milking it. You know, like, <laughs> it's like you're milking a mouse, like from that movie. Uh, but really gentle corrections on the throttle. You know, really, you can see my throttle kind of moving there. Nothing huge, you know. Make the correction, watch for the change, and then make another correction. But it all boil really does boil down to practice and really trying to relax as much one four, camel, one as one possible. Up. Tanker is entering track. All right, hopefully he turns to the left, which they I think they always do. It's pretty standard. And I still have you know my hand on the on the base of the uh, controller, so it's not. I'm not making huge corrections, you know. And I'm just going to match my wings with his wings. This is a little bit harder to do. But just try to match his turn rate and you will have to increase power. Channel 1 1 fuel. Roger. All right, so we are filled and ready to go. Then I'm going to press R and just have my guys rejoin. And we're going to say goodbye to the tanker. Alright, so once we do that, again, it's not mandatory to turn off your radar because we don't truly don't have a standby switch in the Hornet, so it's understandable, you know. And again, <laughs> the real checklist is is just to save uh, save the air crew in the KC-135. Uh, so it's not, you know, it's not very practical to the sim. But if you want full realism, you know, that's what you do. You just have to wait for the uh, FCR to warm back up. Doesn't take very long. Um, and then, of course, you're going to, you know, if you need to go master arm back on, if you're going back out to combat, you can do that. And, of course, your, your probe is going to be retracted. And turning the radar off doesn't seem to affect the uh, waypoints or anything. You know, they seem to be working just fine. But uh, if you just want to be really cautious, go ahead and leave the radar on if you think you're going to lose something. Alright guys, so that's how you do uh, basic air to refueling. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is, you know, practice a lot. And uh, you should be able to hit the tanker consistently, you know, on the first, second, or third try. Um, if you just practice, f fly off of the tanker. If you're staring at that boom and you're trying to, like, maintain position, it's just not going to happen. you got to fly off the tanker. Use your peripheral to kind of... You know, you you don't really even ha you don't have to fly into a basket in BMS like you do in real life in the Hornet. Um, you just fly off the tanker, and and the boom operator is going to guide that boom right to where your uh, probe is. So you don't even have to get in the basket, and it's not too bad. Um, you know, fly off the tank, off the tanker, make tiny tiny corrections, and practice. All right, hope you guys enjoy that video. I'll see you guys next time.